If you're thinking about cruising with your family, whether you have young kiddos or not, teenagers, or maybe even young adults, there are several things you need to consider before you select the cruise line and even the ship. Let's face it, not all ships are created equal. I took my oldest son on his first cruise when he was just five. He's now 33 years old and he still talks about that cruise. I truly believe that cruising with my boys over the years was so successful because my kids had such an amazing time. I've never heard I'm bored. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> not even to this day and not even on a 10 day cruise, but you need to pick your ship very carefully. Look, you know your family and you know what your kids like. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some main things that I think you should really consider before you book your next cruise. Kids clubs and childcare. Check to see if your ship offers a kids club. They usually divide the kids up by their age groups, sort of like school. So your kids will get to play all kinds of games. They'll do art. They have science experiments and they have sporting activities all while being supervised. They will get to meet other kids and they'll make new friends that they'll talk about for a lifetime. The first time my younger boys went on a cruise, they were six, like I think I mentioned, they were six and eight. They did not want to go to what they called daycare. So I made a deal with them. So I told them that I would sign them up, but I would come back to get them in just a couple hours that very first day. And if they didn't like it, they wouldn't have to go back. So they agreed. So I got some alone time to check out the new cruise ship and then some quiet time by the pool. Then I finally went back to pick up the boys. So the crew counselor at the front desk, you know, she went back to collect my kids and she came back without them. <laughs> Where are my boys? So she said, I'm sorry. She said, your boys don't wanna leave. She said, they just ask if you could come back later. <laughs> like after dinner <laughs> but she said that's not possible because you do have to pick them up before dinner but they didn't want to leave they were having such a good time you know there you have it give it a shot with your kids because i think they're going to be surprised it's not at all like daycare so they went every single day after that they got to do so many different things they won all kinds of awards and medals and they played in sporting events they got to dress up like pirates and go on a tour around the ship. Hey, they even told me one night they got to meet the captain and they went up on the bridge and got to see how they drive the ship. And then the captain took them all out for ice cream. So they had, they were living the life. <laughs> Here I am laying by the pool and they're upstairs meeting the captain. So my kids gave it a two thumbs up. So if you have really small children, make sure they have a child care, which is different than the kids club. And also check that the ship you're interested in doesn't charge you extra because some do, depending on the age of your child and when you need to drop them off. You also wanna make sure that they have plenty of other family activities that you all can do together. Some families like to go on the water slides, arcades, they have mini golf courses, sports court, and different age appropriate entertainment. Those of you who've been around for a while know my dogs are running around. <laughs> they get distracting sometimes. I'll get her in a minute and introduce her if you haven't seen her yet. Here she comes. <laughs> hey, Bella, you want to say hi to everyone this morning? Yes, Bella. We are talking to all the cruisers that are out there. So they want to know about cruising with fam families. But guess what? You can't cruise with your puppies. No, you can't. She's excited this morning because I left Cooper upstairs and he is probably standing at the top of the steps wanting to come down and she's trying to get my attention to do that. <laughs> so I'm going to give mama kisses. Okay, good girl. All right, we need to talk about the entertainment in the shows. Can I, can I do that for a minute? Okay. Okay, so speaking of entertainment, it, <laughs> speaking of entertainment and shows, check out what they're going to have on board research the all the entertainment options including family friendly shows performances character meet and greets and even themed events 
Choose a ship that offers age-appropriate entertainment for your family. Again, all of our families are not created equal. Some families like to do, you know, water slides and other families do not. So make sure that your ship has it because you see the commercials on TV, they show you all the bells and whistles. That could even be a collection of ships that you're seeing. You want to make sure that the ship and the cruise line that you pick is the best fit. I do hear families coming home from cruises and they're thinking, well, this isn't what we saw on TV. This isn't what we thought it was going to be. There wasn't any water slides. There wasn't, you know, we didn't visit a private island. They expected it because that's what they're seeing on TV or on the advertisements. Some cruise lines have older ships. They also come with lower price tags. So a lot of people are drawn to them, especially when you're traveling with multiple people and children, but they're not gonna give you what you want per se. You know, I'm gonna try to give you some basic stuff here, but please try to do your research as well. Go onto the different cruise lines websites, click on their ship, They'll have the names of their ships listed. And when you see that, you'll be able to see exactly what is on that ship. Okay. Or you could use my channel as a resource, ask questions. If I can't answer a question about a ship, because I haven't been on every ship, let's face it. I'm sure other people may have been on your ship and you can certainly do that or join our Facebook group and see what's out there because we have a mix of people traveling different cruise lines. Okay. The other thing you need to check is where is everyone sleeping? Have you seen the size of some of these cruise cabins? <laughs> so you have different cruise cabin types. So you might have an interior cabin, which are the smallest on the ship. There's ocean view, there's balcony. Then you start moving on up, right? And you get into the suites and it's almost bigger than your house in some of these ships. You have, you have double decker rooms. Some of them have sliding boards in the room. They have pianos in the room. I mean, it's, it's crazy. What's in your budget and can it fit everyone? Are you going to be cramped or are you going to be at each other's throat by day seven or, or by day five? Sometimes based on the age of your kids, consider booking two rooms. So you could get two, let's say two balcony rooms, for example, and have them connected. So you have a door between kind of like in a hotel, or you could do the same thing for an interior cabin. If your kids are too small and you're a little worried about them being able to access a balcony, do an interior cabin. The other benefit of doing that with a connecting room with your family, you get two bathrooms. I can't tell you how valuable that is when you're traveling with a family of four and everybody needs to use the bathroom or it's time to go to dinner. Everybody needs to shower and get ready. Two bathrooms, put the kids in one room, you and your partner, your husband, your wife can go in another room and everything is good. And plus it gives you some private time too. Once the kids are asleep, you can shut their door and there's no disturbances. Some people also ask me if it's cheaper to book a suite for the entire family versus book in two rooms. And I gotta tell you, you have to price it out. It depends on if you're catching a sale or not, or if you can get a group rate through your travel agent. So, I did book a suite one time when the boys were younger and we loved it. We had plenty of space, but I have since priced out the double room situation. It is a little less expensive than doing the suite. If you're brand new to cruising and this is seeming overwhelming to you, my recommendation is to get with a travel agent. So I used to book my cruises by myself all the time because I like to be in control of everything that I'm doing and I would have sworn that I was getting the best rate. I would price check everything. I would book my cruise. I would come back in a few you know, weeks, months. I would check it daily sometimes. And if that price drops, then you can call and get it repriced and save yourself some money. So I felt very confident that I was getting the best price until a friend of mine came along who I went to high school with and he has his own travel agent and he kept asking me, can I just book one of your cruises? <laughs> it took me probably around eight months before I actually agreed for him to do it. And I'm like, I'm gonna double check your prices <laughs> once we do this. So he booked my first cruise, I think it was one last year. 
And he has a company called Crazy Legs Travel, if you're at all interested. He came back with this phenomenal price. And I'm like, how did you do it? He said, because I can get group rates. Well, all along, I thought group rates meant that I had to travel with a bunch of people, like maybe I needed to book five or more cabins or eight or more cabins in order to get that group rate. That's not the case. So if you have that right travel agent, they can get you their group rate, even if you just need one cabin. And trust me, in my experience so far with my travel agent, he has got me a better rate than I could have ever gotten on my own. And I know I just digressed a little bit, that was not planned, but I feel like it's very important, especially with younger families traveling with younger kids. You guys need to save the money where you can. And plus, it'll give you some extra money in your pocket if you wanna do some of those excursions that you have to pay for. Even though your ship is a major part of your vacation, you're going to stop at a port of call. So please look at the itinerary before making your decision. Make sure that wherever your ship is going, there's something for everyone in your family to do. So for example, some places that you'll end up have aquariums or butterfly farms. Some let you hold monkeys and sloths and you can zip line. You can dive off of cliffs and waterfalls. So not every port of call is gonna have everything just make sure you take a look at it and decide for yourself if it's gonna accommodate you and your family. By considering all these little things that we just talked about, you're gonna be able to pick the best cruise for your family, I have no doubt. This will ensure a memorable and enjoyable vacation for everyone in your family. If you're still here with me, great, because I've done a little legwork for you. I will discuss some of the best cruise lines for families and provide you all with an overview of what they offer to give you an idea. And this is gonna point you in the direction so you can start doing some more research for you. You can compare some of the options and make your best decision. 